welcome to The Guilty Knitter. My name is Vivian Lee and I am your host and I'm coming to you from Montreal, Canada. This is episode 23. If you're a regular viewer, I um, welcome you back. And if you are a new viewer, you're very welcome. Um, <clears throat> if you enjoy this podcast, by the way, please press like and subscribe so you'll have notifications of new episodes when they come up. I'm trying to keep to a more or less bi-weekly schedule. Uh, if you can, you can find me at uh, on Instagram as at Guilty Knitter and on Ravelry as the Guilty Knitter, all one word. Um, and if you're on Twitter, if you're a Twitter person, I am O S M V I V. I can put all that down. It'll be all down below in the, in the description. Um, yeah, and I also have a, a Ravelry page for this podcast um which you can certainly go and you leave a comment over there it's called the guilty knitter or the guilty knitter podcast or something <clears throat> uh there'll also be a link to that down below um all right here's little monty he's a little bit the worse for wear because he had eight teeth extracted yesterday <laughs> poor little guy but he's doing pretty well he woke up with lots of energy this morning. Well, for him, like a normal amount of energy. <laughs> and he doesn't seem to be hurting too much. He's on pain meds and antibiotics. So mm. I'm having my iced coffee. So good. Anyway, poor little guy. He probably doesn't really need to be on my lap. It's very hot today. So I'm going to put him down so we don't make each other any hotter. I had to turn off the air conditioning because it was too loud on the playback. I did a little test and I realized I can't, can't have the air conditioning on. Too bad. Um, okay, so today what's on my agenda is I want to talk to you about, well, I'm going to announce the giveaway winner. And I'm going to um, talk to you a lot about the Lizzie cardigan, which, as you can see, I'm wearing. Yay, finally finished it. And I'm going to show you that in detail. Um, talking about the Coco Sweater Workshop book, which is where I got this pattern. <clears throat> and I will also talk to you about a couple of whips that I'm working on. And I will recommend a couple of podcasts. Um, what else can was I going to tell you about? Um, I have a couple of ac acquisitions, really fun things, and, and things I want to do in my... I'm going to talk to you about what I'm planning on doing. I guess I'm already planning fall knitting. <laughs> really looking forward to, you know, being able to knit warmer things, although that means I'm looking forward to colder weather, which I'm not sure I'm ready for yet, but... Uh, you know, I, I I am and I'm not. I had a moment a couple of weeks ago where I actually got excited about the idea of pulling out my knits and being able to wear sweaters again. <laughs> don't don't shoot me. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna pause this now while I go get something. One second. Okay then. So, may as well start at the beginning. Um, I'll start with the giveaway winner. Uh, the person who won my 100 subscriber giveaway is Marianne Schramm. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And um, uh, all you have to do, Marianne, is send me uh, a, a message on either Instagram or on Ravelry. And I will be very happy to send you the, um, the, the winnings, which I'll show you right now to remind you of what they are. Uh, and to make everyone else jealous who is not getting one. <laughs> one is my beautiful Guilty Knitter mug, which is designed, as I've said many, many times, by my niece, Jess Martin, who is Jess Martin Tattoos, I believe is her Instagram name. And she's very, very talented. And right now, I want to send her out in case she's watching this and I know she watches my podcast even though she's not a knitter which I think is above and beyond um, I believe she sometimes watches it so I wanted to tell her that I'm thinking of her because she just lost her beautiful dog Frank 
and she was uh, she must be feeling that really deeply and I'm and I'm sorry for her I know what it's like to lose a pet it's no fun it's, anyway so hi Jess if you're there and uh, by the way any if you want any anything uh, there's a few things you can get with this logo on it <clears throat> through Redbubble which is uh, the, the company that uh, Jess uses to sell her artwork on yeah on different things t-shirts and mugs and a whole bunch of things so have a look at, at, at that I've also got a um, I've also I've got a link to that down below in the description as well and FYI I don't get get any money from that I all the proceeds that you know I'm sure Redbubble takes a cut or I'm not sure how it works but um, Jess will get all the rest so I'm so, and I think that's the way it should be because it's her artwork and um, there you go and also the other thing she's gonna get in the giveaway is this beautiful thing of yarn thing skein of yarn <laughs> official term called by Zen yarn garden which is a Canadian company and Eagle is the colorway the Serenity 20 um, base, which is 70% superwash, merino, 20% cashmere, and 10% nylon. It's really beautiful yarn. And look at those colors. Beautiful. Anyway, congratulations, Marianne. I, if, um, I still haven't thought of something else to put in. I did mention that I might throw something else in. If I do, I do, but probably it'll just be those two things. All right, so that's the giveaway. And uh, again, thank you so much to all my viewers for um, for being there, for subscribing. And uh, it's uh, it's really fun to to know that I have a few people out there who enjoy my podcasts. And uh, and yeah, I do it for you, and I do it for me because I really like doing it. I like I like talking about my stuff, my my projects, and what I'm learning about them, and what I'm learning about, <clears throat> you know, just I'm continuously adding to my techniques, at least I try to. Um, and yeah, I'll be talking all about that when I talk to you about my tea, my, my tea, my, my beautiful Lizzie Cardigan. And here, I'll stand up, maybe uh, I can show it to you a little bit better. Let's see, so here we go. The only, there were a couple of problems I had with it. I'm going to go through the pros and cons of this method, which is I, I got it from the Coconuts Sweater Workshop book. And this is a, this is a terrific book in, in many ways. I, I decided to write it down like pros and cons of the method, because you might want to buy this book and you might want to know what things you like, oh, I liked about it and what things I didn't. Uh, first of all, it's full of wonderful um, information and great pictures and so little tutorial pictures like, you know, like that, like, you know, fairly clear. Um, and there's, and there are quite a nice, quite a few nice, um, quite a few nice uh, designs. They're very simple in general. You know, sort of like that, and like well, this that, this one on the back, which is like a just a regular, yeah, fairly straightforward car um, pullover, and then of course there's my the Lizzie, which I I worked on, and that's what I made. So now I don't not sure this is no they the yarn that they suggest or she suggests which is Julie Weisenberger who wrote the book what she suggests is a merino cashmere nylon mix and or you know basically a more like sort of traditional wool um, mix so <clears throat> and I think that might have been a better choice in some ways but I, I really wanted a summer version so this is great for that. I'm going to take it off now because even this is a little too hot. It's a really hot and sunny day today. Muggy is all heck. 
making no fun. It's super, super muggy out there. Let me see if I can fix this camera a little bit. Is that better? A little closer? So the pros are, I really like the way it fits. It doesn't come off my shoulders. It sits very nicely, which is a bit of an issue, I guess, for some cardigans, especially because this doesn't have any buttons. And you can see that the, the shoulder is quite nicely made there. And uh, it turned out really well after blocking. I, I was really pretty happy with the way it looked. I was a little nervous about that because of the yarn, but I'll get to that later. But really these, these even though, well, let's just go with the con, the pros right now. Pro, pros are definitely, it, it sits beautifully on my shoulders and I'm really happy about that. It's an elegant design. It's simple. There's, uh, you know, it's easy to wear it with anything in the summer. You can, you know, just throw it on just to keep your shoulders a little bit warm in this, in the, when you go into the grocery store, for instance, or, or the restaurant where they have the air conditioning on full blast. So, sorry about this. So, this coffee is very good. So yeah, it's great and for those things. And as I said, there's tons of pictures, tutorials about each of the different techniques. They tell you how to do Kitchener's. She tells you how to do Kitchener stitch, uh, whip stitch, working in ends with duplicate stitch, uh, picking up Jenny's stretchy bind off, all kinds of different techniques that she uses in the book. And some that she, I don't know if she made the, these techniques up, but they're a little bit different than, um, than what you'd normally use. Like um, for, for instance, she does these increases, <clears throat> which she claims to be uh, more sort of invisible than if you were to do a regular raglan, make one left, make one right. And I guess she, I guess it's true. I don't know, I mean, I didn't like them at first, but I think that's because I made quite a few mistakes because I was just learning the technique. And so they looked really obvious. Anyway, I, I, I had to frog back and redo a bunch of that. So when I did the second time, I was much better at doing the technique. It is, it is a little bit more subtle than, than your average raglan. And that's fine, like, but you know, it's what you prefer. I like, I like the, the raglan, the look of that distinct line for the raglan sweater, but you know, there, I guess there's a time and place, right, for these things. Um, <clears throat> so, so that, anyway, so that's great. And the other good thing about this book is the, uh, the coconut sweater worksheet, which is at the back here. <clears throat> I hope I'm not giving away too much, but anyway, uh, I don't think so. Uh, the so when the setting this up is a little bit confusing at first when you especially I'd never done it before so you put in all your increases here in this chart and for your own size so you're only looking at things for your own size which is nice because you know how it is with some patterns when you've got 10 sizes and you're trying to find your own size the numbers for your own size it can be a little bit annoying and confusing and so this keeps that really simple but it does take a while to get the hang of filling it out and how to, how to use it but once you once you get that hang of it now that i've done it once i could see being being interested in using it again and i another thing i was thinking is that i don't have i could take this let's say this sweater as sort of a jumping off point and do something more interesting like stripes or um or some sort of cable or anything to make it more interesting because I'm not I'm not a fan of stockinette for miles and that's one thing I had to learn I learned the hard way by doing this sweater because I mean as I've done things like this before but you know now that I'm a more more uh, experienced knitter I just get so bored with these long rows of pearls and and knits so I don't think I'll be doing too many more of those pro, pro things that have <clears throat> knitted flat and uh, and just stockinette for miles. I know some people love that kind of thing. I mean, it makes a good 
car project or travel project. But you know, I'd rather do a sock, I think, at that point. Um, the cons, the, I must say the construction of the neck, even though I, I just told you that it works really well, it's extreme. I found it really fiddly. I mean, I don't know if everybody would be so keen on on doing this method just because it's just, yeah, super fiddly. You have to like cut the yarn between each, you, you find yourself cutting the yarn all the time and having to weave in all these extra ends. Uh, I mean, that's just the way this method works. And, and one good thing about it is that in this case anyway, you don't have to pick up, the neck is already done. You don't have to pick up and knit a um, uh, button band. I mean, it kind of rolls in a little bit, but that's the way it's designed to do. Uh, and the neck is fine, and the and the edge here, which I changed a little bit. I added a couple of garter rows, like three garter rows, and then I did the the Jenny stretchy bond off, or surprisingly stretchy bond off, or whatever. And it works great. It doesn't roll at all. And it looks very nice, I think. So that worked out well. Um. But yeah, that it's very fiddly, so just be warned if if you want to do one of these. Maybe yeah, maybe some of you just that's the kind of knitting you love, just mindless knitting. But for, for me, I, I, I no, not my favorite. <clears throat> and yeah, and actually, when I went when I had to frog back because I didn't like the way the increases looked, the raglan increases. I almost went back to my usual make one left, make one right for that, but I decided to persevere and I'm kind of glad I did because now that technique is not scary to me and I know how to do it, so that's good, right? It's always good to have another technique under your belt. Um, okay, so so with my, and the other other challenges I had with this pattern is, is the yarn that I chose, which, uh, you, you know, it's, it's a nice linen. It's Espace Tricot Petit Lin Plus, which is like a, I guess it's a fingering weight or sport weight yarn. Um, and I have knitted with linen before. It's never that much fun, I have to say. I've never loved knitting with linen, but I just love linen. I love wearing it. So I persevered on those projects. I'd made a beautiful linen shawl for my daughter's wedding and I, I loved it once it was done i didn't love it that much when i was knitting it. it but it is it's such a great thing you know so um i won't stop knitting with linen but i must say that it's it's kind of thankless like because as you're knitting it it looks terrible like very uneven and and even and and because i hate purling i ended up Switching from continental purling to Portuguese purling, like somewhere around here, like somewhere around where I split for the sleeves, maybe, or even before that, <clears throat> because I couldn't stand it anymore. Portuguese purling to me is much easier, it's faster, and if you have problems with continental purling, you might want to give that a try. Um, so I was afraid that switching back and forth between the the purling Portuguese and the knitting continental would cause my cause the um, fabric to be even more of a problem like in terms of the uh, evenness of the stitches but finally it's it all kind of blocked out just like M Mona said <laughs> Mona if you watch my episodes and I'm probably not but she works at Espace Trico at Mona Schmidt she's like my guru there she told me, she said it would all block out and she was, she was right. I mean, I really don't, I mean, obviously it still looks like linen and linen's never going to look the same as, as wool, but it's way more even than I expected. So I'm super happy about that. Now the linen itself was a problem because it's, it twisted on itself a lot while I was knitting with it. So that was a pain. <laughs> and I don't know whether that, I've never had that problem to that extent before. So I wonder if it's the way that particular linen is wound or twisted or in the skein. I'm not really sure, but I, um, I had to keep on undoing it, like letting it sort of untwist itself. So that was kind of a pain. Anyway, it all worked out. It's all fine. It's great. I'm happy with the, I'm happy with the results. So that's the main thing. 
and I'm sure I'll get a lot of wear out of it. Um, okay, so that's about it. Do I have anything else to say about that? <clears throat> oh, another thing I did wrong was um, somehow I got the, the fronts were uneven and it really showed before I blocked it. It was pretty obvious that one one of the tips, because it kind of goes down as you saw, kind of comes to these little elegant tips at the, the front. One of them was way long, looked like it was way longer, like two inches longer. And because it was really twisting on itself, it was pretty obvious. But once I had blocked it, it didn't show as much. And I was not gonna go back and redo it. So I obviously didn't, I messed up the increases. They were like too many, I did too many. Increases are not enough, or I don't know. I'm either omitted or added <laughs> increases on one of the sides or the other. So that was kind of dumb. So I guess, you know, I think of myself as pretty careful about checking back to see these, th you know, to make sure of these things. But somehow sometimes I get really convinced that I've done it right. And in that, so in that case, I, I just don't check, like, you know. I'm so sure that I've, I've been remembering. <laughs> but you know what? I often make a mistake, just like the best of us. So I'm, hopefully I've learned a little bit from that. I don't know, we'll see. Um, also, I had a the the sleeves, I wasn't sure quite sure how long to make them. I, I guess I decided on around this length. And I did the first one, I tried it on, I was like, oh, it's a little short. So I, I left it, I did the other one, and I thought I did it a little longer. And I bound off, and I checked it, and I had it on, and I was like, I can't even see a difference. <laughs> Especially after blocking, they just seemed to be more or less the same, and I thought, ah, I'm not going to bother fixing one to make it like a couple of rows longer or something. It all worked out, so I was happy. <laughs> so funny. Anyway. It was, I started that project last June, so June 2018, can you believe it? And I know uh, it's July 20th. So it took me a year. I mean, obviously I didn't do it. I, I put it away after, in September or even August, I don't know. And I didn't pick it up again until this April or May. I'd have to check my, my notes. So it didn't take me as long as it sounds, but um, it just seemed like an endless project, but I'm glad I did it. And I'm, you know, that's, I think once when you actually finish something like that, like when I'm in the middle of that body and I go, I feel like I'm in the middle of the ocean and I can't see the end. Like I cannot see where the, where, where the coastline is and I'm probably going to drown there, you know, but, um, but then you get, finally, finally you start seeing the end, the light at the end of the tunnel or I'm mixing my metaphors, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I finally see the coastline just barely in the distance. And then it comes closer and closer and then you're done. So, uh, yeah, it is worth it, I guess. But I, I definitely want to enjoy the projects I knit more than that. I mean, you have to know yourself. What is it? Why do you knit? What is it you like about knitting? Sometimes I, I think, am I a process knitter, knitter or am I a project knitter? I'm, I'm, there's a struggle in there between the two because there are some beautiful, elegant, plain projects that I think, oh, I'd really love to have that, but I don't want to knit it, see? So I kind of just have to decide that I'm only going to knit the things that are fun because life is too short for knitting things that you don't enjoy, right? How do you make things more fun if they are like sort of a plain knit? Like I said, I would I would add stripes or I would add uh, cables or or a bit of lace or who knows. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that on modifi modifying patterns so that they're more interesting. Excuse me, another swig of coffee. Hmm. Pretty soon, my son and his girlfriend are gonna arrive. So I wanted to get this done before they get here. And then and then I'm going away for a few days. So I knew that if I didn't do it today, I would not get it done before we went away. And I really wanted to because of the giveaway. And I want to get this in the mail. 
So I hope I, I'm gonna also, uh, I'm announcing it now, of course. I'll put, I'll put the giveaway winner's name, Marianne Schramm. Um, I'll put her name down below, but I'll also answer her, her comment in the last episode just to make sure she gets the news. I hope it, I hope it works. I hope she gets, if she doesn't get back to me within, let's say a week, uh, I guess I'll pick another name, but I'm hoping she will get back to me. And okay, so, <clears throat> so that's it for my, for my coconuts sweater my Lizzie cardigan next thing is um, yeah my whips whips works in progress that's what that means uh, check out this this box that my that the that the mug came in this is gonna be perfect for sending off so this is what it's gonna look like, Marianne, when you get it in the mail. Or I might cover it in brown paper or something. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Somehow I'll uh, attach it together again, but that's what it came in. All right, so the next thing, I've gotta show you my, my beautiful sanctuary. All right, ha. Ah, look, I decided to try this thing on since my camera stopped by itself anyway, which it does once in a while practically every week um, so yeah this is the sanctuary tea by um, Stephanie Earp and I'm really liking it look it's so cool I'm a little bit nervous about these stitches coming off the needles but I've got it on two, two needles so that I can try it on it's a bit hard to tell um, whether or not it's gonna fit, but I think it's going to. I'm actually I'm more I'm more worried that it might be too big than too small, but uh, which is usually I'm probably more worried about the opposite. I think I've got it on uh, upside down. Yeah, this is actually the wrong side, but I figure I'll be able to wear it either way I want because it's completely reversible as long as I weave in the end strategically. What do you think? Nice, eh? I'm really happy with it. It's so fun. Oh my gosh, it's a really fun knit. Um, I think I thought at first that it was going to be, I don't know, too hard, too too long, whatever, but, but I'm not getting bored of it yet, so that's a great sign. And I'm, and I'm getting close to sort of um, dividing for the sleeves, so once that's done, I will be back to a reasonable number of stitches. I think I told you it was 455 stitches before I split, but that, that was, I was exaggerating at that point, and it's actually only 448. Wow, I was super exaggerating. <laughs> anyway, so that's, um, that's the Sanctuary Tea by S. Stephanie Earp. I'm going to put these new stitches back on the proper needle. Let's see. What am I doing here? I'm gonna get it off of which one? Yeah, okay. So yeah, so that's the Sanctuary Tea and it's in the Pom Pom Quarterly Magazine. Uh, the, uh, the current one, which is the, is it June? Uh, number 29. Uh, yeah, it's a lovely magazine. It's got lots of really good um, patterns in it. I think I mentioned them to you before. There's even a shawl in there that I like. I, I'm not sure if it's interesting enough for me to knit it. I'll have to see. I'm getting kind of picky about what I knit. I always want it to be something that teaches me a little something or maybe, you know, has something going for it that, that is going to keep my interest, right? And then I'm going to learn something. <clears throat> So we'll see. I'd like, I like. I think I showed you it before, but it's the one that's on the back here. So it looks it's sort of plain, but I think that it actually might be pretty fun. It seems to me there's a bunch of drop stitches in these um, sections, which I haven't done a whole lot of that, so that could be fun. And it's also done in I think a worsted weight yarn, so it could go really quickly. So there's that going for it as well. So, okay, so when it comes to this pattern, 
I, uh, I, again, I, it's the kind of pattern where you think, you know, what you're doing after a while, you're like, oh yeah, this all makes sense. I can see what to do whenever a certain stitch comes up. And then I, and then I'll come around to the next row and I'll go, oh crap, what did I do here? And I realize I've made a mistake in the, in the lace and I have to fix it. But I actually enjoy that process of trying to fix my knitting mistakes without undoing. And when you have over 400 stitches on your needles, you don't want to have to tink back. Am I right? So that's why I'm learning as I go, how to read my knitting, how it should look, and how to make it look the way it should look. I'll have to show you this one spot that I messed up. I, I forgot to do a decrease, I knit two together or something. And so the next, when I got, came around to the next turn, I was like, oh, no, this is not right. I shouldn't have this many stitches here. I should have this many. And so I had to do the decrease, like drop down and do the decrease. And of course, it, I have extra yarn because of that. So it looks super messy at the moment. But I'm hoping that I'll be able to, um, I think I'll be able to even it out. And of course, there's always the joy of blocking covers a multitude of sins, let's hope. And I'll show you the spot. You can, uh, here, I'm almost done here. Um, normally what I do when I want to put a needle, when I want to try, try this thing on is I knit, I put on a needle that has the same tip and I knit it halfway and then I try it on. And then I, um, and then it's, so I'm wasting less time, I see, <laughs> that's how I look at it. Okay, so here is the spot that I messed up. I don't know if you can see it all that well, but I think it looks better on that side than on the, <laughs> which is, this is actually the correct side, which I just remembered. I keep forgetting that this is, that the wrong side is actually the right side. So you can see that it looks pretty messy here. But I'm not too worried about it. I think it's right. I think I fixed it properly. So I just have to kind of even those stitches out. There is one, oof. Anyway, it's really kind of loosey-goosey. But I think I'll fix that up. Anyway, super fun. I totally, I totally recommend it. And also check out her other patterns because she has, she's super, she's so inventive. She just does all kinds of things that I don't see a lot of other designers doing. Um, she must be a knitter after my own heart because she <laughs> she must get bored of saying plain old stock in it. All right, so that's the sanctuary tea, and I might just continue knitting on it while I talk, because um, uh, well, knitting got to get it going, otherwise you never finish. That's how it works. Um, okay, so that's it. Well, actually, I, I'm going to have to show you. Definitely check out St Stephanie's patterns. They are so interesting. Uh, I have, okay, so other things on the needles. I have my socks, which are getting, getting there. I have made a tiny bit of progress. I was at the doctor's office the other day and I had some time. So I did a little bit more knitting. It's coming along. And I'm almost at the point where I will do the well, I'll prepare for the afterthought heel. I still have a little ways to go, I think. I'm liking the, I'm really gonna enjoy these socks when they're done, so I will try to keep working on them here and there. I just don't really feel like making them my focus at the moment because I have all these more interesting projects on the go. Mostly the Sanctuary Tea, of course, which is so much fun. And what else have I got on the needles? Oh, I have my Zweig which I'm not going to bother showing you. It hasn't changed at all since the last time I talked about it. And that I'm definitely going to be back into um, in the fall. And I also have my timber sweater, which is so nice too. And I'm, those are two sweaters that I'm going to be working on madly in the fall. So I have them for the winter. It's nice to have these things on the needles because you know you're going to get to wear them. If the, if the light is a little dim, it's because I had to close, half close the curtain. Is it just too hot? 
but I think you can still see me, right? I think so. All right, so what else I've got? Okay, acquisitions. I have some really nice acquisitions for you, to show you, I mean. I won two skeins of yarn from, and this was just one of these random giveaways that that are often on Instagram. And I heard, I mean, I'm at the point now where I rarely put my name down for them. Cause you know, I never really, win. I think I won once. Yeah, I won once and that was on a YouTube one. It wasn't on the Instagram, but anyway, finally won once. So that was fun. It's polka dot sheep. And she sent me these two skeins of yarn, um, 100 grams each. One is still water and the other one is inversion. This one is inversion, this one is still water. And also it came with a, um, a pattern for a little cowl, which is quite nice. I might do it, I might not, I might do something else. This is 75% merino and 25% mulberry silk. So 438 yards, which is quite nice. That's quite uh, good. I guess it's kind of average, I don't know, but it seems like quite a bit, bit of yarn. And I could totally just make a lovely little shawl with these, I think. So I'll have to think about what I want to do. Thank you very much, Polka Dot Sheep. I already thanked her on Instagram, but in case she watches my podcast, you never know. I will be. I thank you again. Um, I don't know that this is super washed. It doesn't say super washed on here, but I seem to remember seeing it on when I looked on her website that it was super wash wool. Just kind of too bad because I'm kind of trying to avoid it, but you know it's impo it's sort of not impossible. But I have quite a bit of superwash in my stash, so I'm definitely going to use that up. And I and I don't want to feel guilty about using it. I'm, the reason I'm trying to avoid it is because of the pr the process is quite environmentally unfriendly. You know it. Uh, you know they basically dip it in plastic or something. <laughs> I mean, it can't be that simple. But apparently, plastic is involved. A type of plastic and uh, it just seems so sad because sheep I mean sheep yarn wool and natural fibers are all gonna break down and nicely into the environment and you can feel good about that but if it's super washed it's not going to <laughs> so yeah so that's why I'm trying to avoid it but um, at the same time um, you know if it comes my way I'm not gonna waste it so <clears throat> It's still gorgeous yarn, and I don't know for sure which way it is. So, if it's supposed to be, but well, it may be supposed to be for socks, but I don't, I don't know if it would be great for socks or not. I'm not sure, but I'll probably use it for a shawl. All right, so that's what that is, and oh, and this company, Polka Dot Sheep, is from um, is from uh, Montana. Yeah, Whitefish, Montana, a long way away. And um, anyway, it's just this very lovely squishy yarn. That silk in it, I guess, makes a big difference. So that'll be nice. All right, so there's that. Oh, and then I got a present from a friend of mine. So sweet of her, my friend Andrea, who went to Latvia. And she got me this gorgeous kit for to make a pair of mittens. And it has this story about Latvian mittens, and it has the pattern <clears throat> with the, and I guess this is the uh, chart, obviously. It doesn't have a, have any kind of a, um, a key, so some of this seems a little, a little confusing, but I think it's going to be self-evident once I get started. And uh, look at this amazing freaking yarn. Ha, oh, look at the colors. Aren't they wild? I'm really looking forward to making this, making these gorgeous mittens. So they, those will be on my queue in the fall, for the fall. Um, I've, I've always wanted to make a pair. You know what it says to make it on uh, a 1.75 millimeter needle, I think? I might just go for two millimeters. I've never knitted with less than two millimeters. <laughs> I can't imagine that, um, I'll be able to do that. So anyway, whatever. I'll figure it out at the time. I'll do some, I'll try it out on a two and see what happens. So that's beautiful. And it, look, this kit obviously comes with all these other different styles or different um, 
uh, patterns. Thank you so much, Andrea. That was so thoughtful of you to think of me from all the way in Latvia. She, Andrea plays in a military band in Ottawa, and she um, she was there on tour, or on yeah, on tour, celebrating Canada Day over there. So that's kind of fun, me playing in the band. She is uh, a trumpet player, I think. Gosh, I hope I don't get that wrong, Andrea. That would be sad. Um, okay, so here we go. Next thing, on my cue, I am going to make the Avery sweater by Verona Knits and she's a local designer whom I know. I don't know her well but she uh, I, this is her first pattern so I'm really happy to to make it. Oh, where did I put it? Here it is. Hold on. I'm going to show you the picture. The Avery sweater is quite it's already quite uh, popular on, on uh, Instagram and on Ravelry I think and um yeah very uh, excited to make this little one for my newest great niece i think I, it'll be perfect for the for the winter so i'm gonna make it she's already a couple months old now so i guess if i make the six month size or something like that it should be good for the winter maybe it'll do her for a couple winters no maybe not that's a little too hopeful but it's going to be fun to try this because I've never, it's, you use intarsia, which I've never tried before. I mean, the socks that I'm making um, with that design down the middle, is it kind of like an intarsia? Because you do have this. All right. Okay, so back again. Um, I think I was talking to you about my, um, my things in my queue. So I'm going to make the Avery sweater which I think I just showed you, yes. And um, yeah, she's a, she's a new designer, so I'm happy to support her. She's a local designer. I'm, I don't know, I'm just trying to do my little bit. But uh, neither here nor there, I really like the pattern and I'm gonna make it for my great niece. And I'm looking forward to that. It's gonna, and I'm gonna learn something new because I've never tried intarsia before. Uh, so I, I, that kind of brings me to the um, subject of uh, what's been going on. Again, there's been all kinds of controversy on Instagram. Um, the latest is the whole problem, the whole thing with the sockmetician who uh, went off the rails last week and uh, attacked or threatened, I should say, a woman of color who talked to, tried to talk to him about something he'd written on Instagram that she had, she and many others took offense um, by, and uh, took offense at, I guess. Um, anyway, I, I think what, I think what I've taken away from it is that sometimes I don't, I don't see where the offense lies right away, and in this case, that, that's exactly what happened. I read what he wrote, and although I didn't quite catch what he was trying to say, uh, it took me a while to realize what he was saying, and also what, why it would be offensive to, to people of color. BIPOC, B-I-P-O-C, um, people. So, I think what, it goes down so deep and it goes back so far that you, you, you know, those of us who are, who haven't dealt with it all their lives in, in such an upfront personal way, um, we need to learn to listen and not jump to, I don't know, criticize uh, people who are dealing with um, racism and who are not, who are dealing with bigotry on a daily basis. I mean, and I'm not talking about the kind of bigotry that, or bigotry, I, I don't even know if bigotry covers this, but the kind of, um, I mean, as a woman, we're all, we are also treated as second-rate citizens in certain situations and through, throughout history, etc. But um, put on that, you know, add the layer of let's say being a black woman, a woman of color or indigenous, um, you have that a whole other layer of, um, of bigotry to deal with and, and mostly and on a daily basis. 
that we can't even begin to understand, I don't think, unless we really start listening and reading and, and absorbing what their experiences are. So yeah, so that's what I'm kind of at, where I'm sort of at with this. And um, the problem with the sacramentician is that he, he was criticizing how people uh, were dealing with their reality, I guess, in a way. And when he, when he was called on it, he wasn't able to admit his mistake, you know. But, um, and I, I mean, and I think from being gay, he had this idea that he was already, he's kind of like, I don't know, um, immune to, to racism somehow, like that he couldn't be racist because he's gay and he, he also was treated as a second class citizen to some extent. But the fact is that he's a white man in Western society and it's not quite so bad. Um, as being a black person in almost in any in Western society or in you know anyway that's the thing that's kind of what happened and um, this is my little political rant for today and but the thing is that with what's going on with our our country to the south you know the US um, president making incredibly racist remarks on TV and allowing the, his supporters to to just ugh, you know treat people I mean he is the example he sets the tone as my husband says for how people treat each other in in, in, in the US, in US society like if if they if they think that it's okay to chant you know send them back you know and and be so incredibly racist and bigoted then it's going to creep into daily society and and it already is of course and, and it's really scary no wonder um, this is all seeping into Instagram and all these different you know places in our knitting community because it's out there in the larger community and it's it's really scary I think so that's my rant for today. I seem to be bringing in a little bit of politics to every to every show. But I mean, it's pretty hard to avoid these days. And I don't even watch the news if I can help it. But my husband's addicted, so I hear it. I hear about it. Okay, so that's enough of that. I will not talk about that anymore today. But I won't promise not to bring it up in another, in another podcast. Okay, so... On my queue, the Avery sweater, the Latvian mittens, the Opteca sweater, which is what I'm making for uh, my daughter. Uh, it's this sweater here, but I'm going to steak it and make it into a cardigan. And one thing I was thinking actually is that I'm a little worried that there'll be a problem with, if I'm turning this into a, oops, sorry, turning this into a cardigan that the shoulders may not stay on very well because she doesn't want buttons on her cardigan so I'm a little hesitant about that but I, so I was actually thinking that maybe what I should do is use the sweater type the, the shoulder techniques that are in the Coco knit sweater for that top part and then I don't know anyway I'm, I have to give it some more thought but that's a possibility so I'm looking forward to doing all the modifications for that I want to do for this because I really like this part and I, I like the raglan and my daughter likes this pattern so I think it'll work out but I'm going to add more of the pattern up behind beside the two um, you know the two button bands which aren't going to be button bands the bands anyway uh, yeah so looking forward to doing all that so that's going to start in the fall too I have a lot of projects in the fall so we'll see how that goes fall and winter let's just put it that way it could take me a while all right so and I'm going to do this in, in Scout by the way this, this is a, pro a project by Isabel Kramer this sweater and I really like her designs so fun well written too all right so podcasts that I want to recommend I've been not watching you know talking about all these uh, race issues just um, made me think look for podcasts um, 
by people of color. So I'm uh, watching Say It Loud and it's really, it's fun, it's interesting, it's, it's funny and you learn something about what's going on, you know, you learn something about another culture basically because uh, yeah and it's that's important I just want to I just want to learn some stuff so and and uh, so I would recommend that say it loud that's on YouTube as well and it's it's a PBS podcast I didn't know they did podcasts but there you go and another one I like is fleece and harmony which is um, I just started watching it if it was recommended by my friend Linda and they're uh, um, sheep farmers in um, PEI, and they also they make their own wool and uh, dye their own wool, I believe. And so they uh, they're great. They're really a lot of fun. Two sisters. They're kind of like the East Coast grocery girls, <laughs> although they might not be as outrageous as our, as the grocery girls are sometimes. So, but they're fun. They're really nice. And they have really nice yarn, actually. I'm tempted to buy some of it. Um, hey Brownberry, which I think I've mentioned before. It's a very good podcast. And Very Pink Knits, which I, is something that probably everybody already knows about. But she and um, my other favorite for techniques is uh, Roxanne Richardson, who does a Technique Tuesday video every week as well as a um, Friday video, which she calls uh, Casual Fridays, yeah. I really like Roxanne. She's a very, very smart knitter, very knowledgeable. I've learned a lot from watching her videos. And Very, and very Pink Knits, I think her name is, is Stacy. Stacy. Um, she does a lot of really good, it's mostly technique videos that she does, and they're very good. So. I'm sure if you haven't already checked them out, lots and lots of very basic things and very clear. She does a great job. Okay, so those are the my podcast recommendations for, for now. And I think oh if you want to listen to something fun this summer and which it, and I think quite topical considering the political situation in the States. I've been going through all the Harry Potter books on Audible this this summer and I mean, I read them years ago, but it's fun to listen to them. First of all, they're very well read by this actor, and whose name I forget, of course, but um, he's very good, does all the voices and stuff. And, um, but it's really, it's, I find it reflects what's going on in, in, it reflects a society or a political situation that is um, becoming more and more, um, what's the word? Mm, oppressive, I guess, and um, yeah, it, it could be. You could, yeah. It kind of reminds me of what happened in Hitler, Hitler's Germany, and it's kind of reminding me of what's going on in the States. It's interesting to read them from that perspective. I don't know if I ever really thought about it at the time, but she's pretty, um, yeah, pretty political actually. So check that out if you're interested in Harry Potter. All right, well, I guess that's it for today. This is going to be a bit of a long one, I guess. Um, please do hit like and subscribe, and I will... Um, thanks for joining me. I wasn't too thrilled with my last episode in the sense that I, I thought... I did not prepare very well for that episode. I kind of did it quickly because I was... Uh, I really wanted to get it out there, but um, I kind of regretted that in the end because I felt like I was stumbling a lot over my words. Anyway, well, live and learn. So have a good um, couple weeks, and I'll see you back here, same same channel. And I will see you in a couple, whenever I can, but hopefully in two weeks. And uh, happy knitting, okay? Happy knitting till I see you again. Please let me know down below what you're, what you're um, knitting. And also, by the way. I am going to do a knit along in the fall, and I'm thinking of either a, uh, a steaking knit, knit along or a color work knit along, or both, or maybe both. I don't know, like either one. 
if you have a preference or, or have another suggestion, let me know. But I'm really I'm keen to do some sort of knit along. Oh, by the way, the Avery sweater I'm I'm doing it for a knit along starting starting I think it's August through through the September um, through um, uh, what's the company Julie Aslan. I think she's running a knit along on Instagram. So check on Instagram Ravelry. So check that out if you want to join a uh, knit along to do the Avery sweater which is that little color work sweater I'm doing for my niece. Okay, that's enough of that. Sorry, I said goodbye and now I'm saying it again. Happy knitting. Bye for now. Hi guys. Oh my God, you don't look very friendly. You look like you're very mad at me. Hi. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at all the beautiful animals. Look at them. Look, they're staring at me. Hi. <laughs> Hi, guy. <laughs>